The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello, and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Mike, and in today's episode, we're going to build an automatic Etch-a-Sketch machine. An Etch-a-Sketch is a classic drawing toy, and when I used to play with one as a kid, I could draw a pretty good staircase, but anything else was a little bit tricky, so I think we can use some electronics to help us out. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. An edge sketch is controlled with two knobs. One does horizontal lines and the other one vertical lines. And if you rotate them both together, you can draw diagonals and curves and basically draw yourself a picture. The way this works is this is a sheet of glass and underneath it's coated in a very fine aluminium or aluminium powder. And there's a stylus that scrapes away this powder and that's what gives you your line. You can erase your drawing by turning it upside down and shaking it. And this recoats the glass in the silver powder. The knobs are controlling a, a set of pulleys and wires and that's what moves the stylus around the glass. And actually, if you scrape away enough of this powder, you can get a glimpse inside the mechanism. And you can see it's, it's actually kind of similar to how an Ultimaker 3D printer works. So if we can attach some motors to the, these knobs, and in theory, we can get it to move the stylus to wherever we want and draw some pictures. So that's the rough plan anyway. Um, let me show you what I've uh, come up with so far. So, First, we need to choose a type of motor for our project. I'm thinking a stepper motor would be good for this because we can control it really precisely. Next, we need to decide how we're going to link it to our etch sketch knobs. Now, ideally, I wouldn't make any permanent modifications. I'm thinking of maybe a machine that we can slot the etch -a sketch into, have it draw a picture, and then we can remove it afterwards and kind of pretend that we drew it ourselves. So maybe some kind of gear mechanism between the motor and the knobs. Um, something that we can 3D print. And finally, uh, auto erase feature would be cool. So it'd be nice for our machine to be able to automatically kind of flip the etch -a sketch and erase our picture. And I'm thinking again, maybe some gears and a servo could accomplish that. Now I'm just gonna gather a few parts together, um, space them out and see what we can come up with. Okay, so I'm thinking of arranging things like this. We have the motors in line with the knobs and this would be kind of sliding into uh, some kind of contraption to hold it and then there'd be a pair of gears that would uh, connect them together. So I'm going to go and draw all of this up on the computer and see what we can come up with. Okay, here's what I've come up with for our frame design. So I've got a replica of the Etch-a-Sketch and the motors and the motors are mounted directly in line with the control knobs and I've also made a, a kind of sleeve for the Etch-a-Sketch to slot into and this will hold it nice and steady and in the right place, really securely, the correct distance from the motors. The motors are fixed with a, a two separate pieces that uh, click onto the frame and also screw in around the back and another couple of screws around the front. And the gears themselves I've made in two separate pieces. So there's one piece that's a uh, kind of cap and that fits over the control knob uh, quite snugly. It has a, a coil around the outside to act as a screw thread and slots inside so that it can grip on really nice and tightly when the threaded part, or when the, sorry, the toothed part is, uh, is screwed on. These gears engage with another pair of gears on the motors themselves. And that's what's gonna allow us to actually turn the knobs and draw something on our edge sketch. So let's get these parts printed out and see how they fit. Okay, uh, here's all my parts. I've got the, the main frame piece here and the two kind of pods for the motors. These clip on to the side and then they're secured with screws. Then the motors, they, they just slot into the back like so. And then they're secured with some screws on the front too. And this is the, the gear that slots onto the, the motor shaft. And there's another screw hole there that we can um, put a, a screw in just to secure it on place. Um, let me show you the, the motor or the 
of the knob gears. These are in two parts. So the idea was that this would, would fit on over the knob and this piece would screw on. But actually I found that kind of you screw it on outside and then just press fit that it um, grips it enough that it can turn the motor. And then I'll let just get just slots in like that. Um, it locks in place. And so that when we turn the, the motor, turns our gear and we can we can draw a line. Now we need to work out how to drive the stepper motors and figure out the electronics. So I want to use a Raspberry Pi for the brains of my etch sketch because it's going to make it easier later on when we're generating pictures. Um, for now though, we just want to get the motor moving and a stepper motor is a bit more complicated to drive than a regular DC motor. You can't just hook it up to power, it needs a specific sequence of pulses. Uh, each one of these pulses we call a step, and for this motor, uh, 200 steps gives it one revolution. I've got a motor driver here, and uh, some example code that I can run. Um, when I do, it should rotate the motor forwards and then backwards. So, nice and simple, let's have a look. All right, okay, so something was wrong here. Um, it should be, should be rotating smoothly. And our power LED is, is blinking, so something wrong there. Um, let me take a look. Okay, so I think I know what's going on here. Um, tried the same motor driver, the same code, with a slightly smaller motor. And let me just run it here. And it seems to work fine, so what I think is that this, this larger motor um, was drawing too much current, or this, the, this stepper driver couldn't supply enough current to reliably turn this motor, and the, the smaller one you know, it seems to work fine. This gives me um, a bit of a decision to make. Um, do I swap out these motors for some smaller ones? Um, they're the same, uh, same kind of footprint, but just this one's a bit longer. Although I have already printed all of the parts for this, um, it seems to fit up quite nicely. The other option is to change out the motor driver to something a bit stronger, something that can drive these. And I think I'm going to try that first because I do have a board that um, should have enough power to, to run some of these. So I'm going to try that now and see what we do. So this is a CNC shield on top of an Arduino Uno and should have plenty of power to run our big stepper motors. But before we can hook it up, we need to calibrate it for our system. So let's bring this back in. Uh, these are the final gears that I printed. Um, the stylus is probably somewhere around the middle. And I'm just going to put a mark on this gear here. And now if I rotate it uh, one complete revolution, then I know that's 200 steps. So if I do that now, Okay, it's drawn a line, and if I measure the line, I can work out a value for steps per millimetre and plug that into the Arduino, and then our new stepper drivers will know exactly how far to turn each motor to draw, say, a, a one millimetre line. So I'll do that now for the other axis, and then we can have a look and see if we can send it some, some drawings. Okay. Everything should be calibrated now. I'm ready to send it some G-code. Um, I've got some here, it's gonna be a circle. Um, I do need to be careful because the motors won't know if we've reached the edge of the screen. They'll just keep turning and that could damage the mechanism. So I've got this circle here and you can see this point is where we're gonna start. My stylus is around about there. So hopefully it should draw a nice big circle in the middle. Um, I've tried this before, but Fingers crossed it works this time. Let's uh, give it a go. Yeah, that's not too bad. Um, so a little bit lumpy maybe, but seems to have got back to the start pretty well. Um, looks really round. I think trying to do this by hand would be really difficult. So definitely a good start. Maybe a little bit more tweaking of the, the steps per millimeter again might sort of round it out a little bit more, but pretty happy with that so I think now we can move on to designing the frame. 
So I want to be able to automatically erase the picture. And to do that, I need to be able to flip the whole thing upside down. So this is what I've come up with for that kind of design. This is the frame we printed earlier, and it's mounted in this kind of flip frame. Um, there'll be some bolts going through uh, a bearing in the, in the frame itself, and they'll act to pivot the entire thing. I don't know if this is the, the best way to do it or not, but I've set up three gears here. Uh, the servo is uh, attached to the bottom gear, and the frame is mounted to this larger gear at the top. They're connected by an idler gear in the middle, and there's a reduction of about two and a half to one with the servo driving the smaller gear, which, if I understand correctly, should give the servo more torque to be able to lift up the, the entire unit. So, again, I'm not sure if this will work in practice, but in theory, if this bottom gear rotates, I'll show you here, then it should be able to invert the whole frame like this. Let's get these parts printed and see if it works. Okay, so this is it all put together and I've had to make a bit of a bodge here. Um, those of you who know what they're doing probably saw this coming, but because of the, the gear uh, arrangement that I've got here, it does make it easier for the servo to lift the whole frame. Uh, the frame with the motors and the etch sketch weighs about 1.5 kilograms, um, but it also makes it easier for the frame to back drive the servo. Um, when I was designing it, I didn't take into account how it would, um, you know, the center of balance. So actually when the, when the extra sketch is, is inside, um, it tends to, tends to want to tip forward all the time. Uh, so what I've done here is this is the bolt that's part of the axle for the whole thing. Um, this piece is uh, fixed to the bolt and has a magnet here. And I've added a, another magnet inside the frame, just, uh, just drilled it and, uh, and pushed it in. And so that when the frame comes up to the top, the magnet attracts each other and uh, keeps it in place. And works pretty well. I mean, probably should have had the magnets kind of this way up so that the the forces are, are collinear rather than perpendicular, but seems to work okay and actually looks all right. It doesn't doesn't kind of spoil the, the design at all. Um, so now I'm just going to give the, the servo mechanism a, a test. I've got a, a servo tester here. I'm just going just gonna to attach it. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. Goes all the way forward. Ooh, and back up. <laughs> right, so you see, there's no uh, limit switches in it at all um, at the moment. It was, that was just m under manual control. And I'm actually using a continuous rotation servo rather than a, a regular servo that you can set an angle with uh, because I needed more than 180 degrees of, of rotation on this bottom gear. Um, so with these continuous rotation servos, you can set the speed and the direction um, but it doesn't know anything about the actual angle that it's at. So this is that's something that we're going to have to address with the electronics, which is up next. So move this aside and we're going to put that together now. Here I'm soldering an Arduino to a piece of perf board and uh, also an MPU 6050 inertial measurement unit, or IMU. Uh, because our servo doesn't know its position, we're going to use the IMU to calculate the angle of the frame and then use that to control our servo for the arrays function. Okay, so this is all of the electronics mounted now. We've got the servo driver that we saw earlier. This is our new auto arrays electronics and they both connect to the Raspberry Pi via USB. The code for the Arduino is pretty simple. Uh, first of all, it calculates the angle from the gyroscope and accelerometer data and then waits for a signal, waits for a serial message from the Raspberry Pi. Uh, when it receives one, it switches on the servo, which tilts the, the whole frame forward. When it reaches a set angle, it reverses the servo to tilt it back up, and then goes back and forth a couple of times to give it a bit of a shake, and then returns it to the home position, turns off the servo, and the magnet holds it in place. I'll get it all uh, hooked up now, and we can have a demonstration. So you notice I've printed some extensions for the frame. 
and this lets it flip the etch sketch fully um, before it was struggling to erase the drawing all the way. Now, actually creating a, a G code for a drawing is, is kind of tough, but um, doing text is pretty easy. So I've got some text here that I'm going to uh, I'm going to send to it, and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Okay, pretty cool. <laughs> and now let's uh, try and erase it. Okay, almost, almost all of it. Um, sometimes it uh, leaves a little bit of dust there, but overall, uh, pretty good. So I think we accomplished most of what we set out to do with this project. We can control our etch sketch with a Raspberry Pi, and it's fully removable with no lasting modifications. Although the the auto erase feature became a little bit complicated, we found a solution that worked in the end. If I was to rebuild this project, then I'd probably use a stepper motor instead of a servo for the flip mechanism. A stepper would have had no problem holding up the full weight of the motors and the frame, and it would also meant not having to use the IMU. And speaking of the IMU, uh, we could have used limit switches instead, that would have simplified the code. But it would have also meant redesigning the case slightly, and I was quite happy with how it looked. So, and also hadn't used an IMU before, so that little bit of extra code didn't really hurt. These uh, stepper motors were overkill. Uh, we could have definitely used uh, smaller ones than this, but it would be quite interesting to see how far we can tune them and see how fast a drawing that we can make with this thing. And speaking of drawings, um, actually generating a, a clean g-code from a picture or a photograph is a bit more complicated than I first thought so we didn't have time for that in this episode but apart from that I think we did pretty well what do you think have you ever used a stepper motor in a project before how would you have tackled the flip mechanism would have you used uh, potentiometers or uh, limit switches maybe a, a different gear design let me know on the element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents where you'll also find all of the 3D files and code to go along with this project. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.